What's going on guys, The Inhuman Beatdown, I'm back with another Real Thoughts. This is the series where I voice my extended opinions on a game I've completed. So today, after what feels like almost an entire year, I'm fairly sure it has... Actually, it might, might have been. I don't actually know. Anyways, uh, yes, we have... Uh, we're taking a look at Marvel's Spider-Man. For the PlayStation 4, the open-world action-adventure game that sits us in an alternate timeline, Spider-Man, and I'm not gonna fucking lie, I fucking love this game. Like, absolutely adore this game. And I know what you're saying, I should wait until I get done with the DLC to do this thing, but the DLC is gonna have its own thing because, honestly, a lot of that I could talk about in there will just kind of blend into all this because like I could talk about the combat all the exploration stuff like that but honestly a lot of that's just gonna be kind of same same samey I guess that would benefit more reasons to uh talk about it here oh fuck it no I don't feel like redoing this recording anyways so yeah um pretty much you've heard all this everyone pretty much like really likes this game and for good reasons it it tells a really good compelling story admittedly it's got some points that any Spider-Man worth their badge, worth their merit, I don't, could fucking see a thousand miles coming. Like, the moment they introduced Dr. Otto Octavius, I knew instantly they were probably going to turn him into Doc Ock by the end of the game. Um, like, there, there was just no, there was no fucking way I wasn't going to expect that. And I had, reserv not reservations, but I had thoughts and theories it's like oh man everyone's talking about harry going to europe like it's fucking uh like he fucking died or something oh hey i have a terminal illness oh 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 just one of those kind of like realizations kind of things uh i did enjoy also like the cameo of miles morales and basically him getting his spider powers at the end of the game that was a nice touch too uh, but since I'm getting a little ahead of myself, let's uh, back up a bit and go into the story first. So the story basically sees a Peter Parker who is already Spider-Man taking down Wilskin. Wilskin? Wilskin. 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 Does that sound like the name of a cannibal? I don't know. Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. the, ki the Kingpin. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much where it starts off. In the vacuum of the uh, Kingpin power, a uh, bunch of thugs and other people just try to take over. Uh, this kind of serves as basically the foundation for uh, the rest of the game in a certain sense. I do kind of wish the Kingpin had a more active role, uh, like, in between. Like, maybe he was secretly financing everything or something else. I don't know. It just kind of feels like... It, this is kind of a, what I'll say, a trend for certain villains. And I kind of wish they didn't do that. I wish there was more to them. But they feel like they just appear for a brief couple seconds and then they're just like... They, they serve their screen time and then go away. Uh, this, uh, and I mean this for both story bosses and side quest bosses. It's a little bit more forgivable with the side quest bosses since they're optional, but yeah, I'll get there eventually. So yeah, then of course we get introduced to uh, the demons, these mask wearing dudes with like supernatural powers. Turns out they're led by Negative Man, a super powered alternate ego of Martin Lee. Uh, defeat him. Osborne's doing some really shady shit with, uh, with, uh, some kind of, like, super cure that was supposed to cure cancer and stuff like that, but it basically causes, like, a bunch of terrible fucking shit to go wrong, codenamed Devil's Breath. Or not codename, but I guess nicknamed Devil's Breath. Lee wanted to, like, expose Norman for what he was after a after dealing with a bunch of crap and also, like, things fucking with his brain. Otto goes off the end and becomes Doc Ock takes Devil's Breath, he breaks out a bunch of previous villains from the raft, mainly Vulture, Electro, Scorpion, Rhino, and of course, Negative Man, and form their own band of the Sinister Six. I kind of wish they were actually referred to, well, no, he he did name drop the Sinister Six in one of his audio logs, I stand corrected. I was going to say, I wish they were actually officially called the Sinister Six. Although, that does remind me of Scorpion's comment of the, how about the, how about the, uh, uh the guys who beat Spider-Man and wore him as a coat six, or something similar to that. Um, but yeah. 
So afterwards, it basically just becomes a big shithole, trying to deal with that, an outbreak of Devil's Breath. Osborne has, like, Silver Sable and her mercenaries trying to, like, police the area. You have to take everyone down, defeat everyone, big heart-filled moments, and, of course, really tragic, sad ending that I totally will not cry out again if I ever see again. But yeah, fantastic story overall. And the mechanics of the game are equally just as good. I find the web swinging and the world tra uh, traveling exquisite and amazing. Like, it's almost kind of sad that there are these fast uh, fast travel places with interesting kind of like uh, animations in between. Like, you know, being on the bus with like the Spider-Man lookalike or just being on the bus browsing the phone. I think when... Uh, uh, the mercenaries start taking over you hide out like the outside of the bus contorting your body so they don't see him or the subway or whatever and I never got to show any of that off because it's almost faster if you know what you're doing to just start web swinging that's the ultimate sad side to like the fast travel it's not necessary I mean yeah it makes things convenient at times but for the most part I just wanted to, like, embrace the world and web swing around and collect collectibles, which I did all of. And I love that this is kind of like a, after JJ retired, he now has a podcast kind of crap so he can talk more shit about Spider-Man. Uh, so good. Uh, the gadgets for Spider-Man's combat are also really amazing. While I think some are better than others, like, I never really found myself... Aside from a couple times, like, on high buildings or whatnot to get rid of enemies using, like, the, uh... The, like, basically the force blast or the force push, what I'm gonna refer to it as. Or the gravity matrix, aside from a few, like, um... Uh, optional battles. Not optional battles, but, like, optional objectives and stuff like that. Never really found a good use for those. Um, but yeah. I really enjoyed using those. It kind of actually makes me sad watching, uh, playthroughs the people who don't get like hands-on experience they go immediately blind into the game they're just like they never use most of their gadgets i'm just like come on those things can like basically just make battle super fucking easy why aren't you using them mm. sorry about that uh but yeah though for as much as i talk about the game i will admit there are some flaws with the game uh, first of all, as I said with the villains, I kind of wish some of them stuck around a bit longer. For optional missions like Taskmaster or Tombstone, okay, they're optional. You can kind of get away with that. Um, also, side nitpick I'd like to mention. God, I fucking hate the Taskmaster's drone challenges. Some of those, like, mainly one or two of them are just fucking ball-bustingly hard for no reason. Like, the entire drone missions are designed for you to be, like, both both fast and accurate, but it's clear, like, Spider-Man's web swinging was not designed with accuracy in mind. Like, I think one of them I only beat, and I've only seen people on YouTube beat by milliseconds on gold. It's so ball-bustingly hard. Uh, but yeah, so the villains, uh, you know, they're kind of like one-offs. You do a couple missions or something, do like a challenge or side quest activity or something, you get to fight them. Like, fighting against Tombstone, you take away, like, his invincibility, so to speak. Fucking showdown against, uh, Taskmaster. There's, of course, doing screwballs, whole shtick. Um, trying to think of who else was, a uh, side, uh, objective. I guess that's technically it. We didn't actually fight Black Cat. She gets her own DLC, so I'm not going to mention her here. Uh, but aside from that... Man, when they get the Sinister Six uh, part going, I really wish, like, four of the six had more to do with it. Electro, Vulture, Rhino, and Scorpion just feel so... Like, padding. I really wish there was more to it. Like, you get to see them cause some mayhem and destruction, but it's like... Okay, you have to go stop... Uh, Electro from doing this thing and Rhino from doing this thing. All right, cool. Now go investigate this area up here. Awesome. Hey, you're in a boss fight with Electro and Vulture. I'm sorry, what? Hey, Electro and Vulture are defeated. What? Like, it's just so sudden. You just suddenly defeat them. That's it. Same with Rhino and Scorpion. It's just like, hey, they get a few scenes together. All right. Now go, uh, go beat their asses. All right, they're done. Like, what was the point of them being here then? I guess it's... Like, they're good and they're cool and all, especially in the scenes they are in by themselves. But 
I just wish there was more to them. I, like, okay, I can understand defeating Lee that quickly, like Negative Man. We spent the entire, like, first part of the game getting to know him and his character. He, yeah, we don't, we don't need to see more of him, but we're only told, like, if you read snippets about, like, these four. I wish we could have gotten to see more of them, take them down individually or something. I don't know. I just wish there was more to it. On that note, though, the other thing I don't like is the four stealth sections. While they're okay, they do fucking kill the pace for the entire game. Like, I get it. It's kind of an interesting, unique take on the fact that it's like, you know, Spider-Man may need some un like help, whether he knows it or not. And that's where you get Mary Jane or Miles sneaking around and doing all this kind of stuff. But it's like, you know, it's cool that these are here, but I've spent like 90% of the game playing a Spider-Man who could probably get this done faster with, uh, while also maybe dealing with the people who are causing this problem with minimal effort. Why am I not playing him? I don't know, it just... Early on, especially with Mary Jane, it feels really sluggish. It got a little bit better when I got the stun gun, and I could just fucking just run up to people and fucking stun them in the back, and I'm like, Oh, hey, surprise! And that was it. But... Oh, God. <sighs> on that note, I'm also not particularly a fan of Mary Jane's whole spiel about, like, Oh... Uh, damsel in distress, blah, 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 I want to be partners with you and stuff like that. It's like, you know, I get it. That's character growth. She doesn't want to be like the damsel in distress. She wants to actually help Peter be there for him and stuff like that. And that's great and all, but she just comes off in the most obnoxious way possible when she does it. Like, you're going to have to come to terms, MJ. You're fucking human and don't have superpowers. Your boyfriend does. Like, oh god, it, it's one of those points where I can see the argument of both sides, but it's just so obnoxious because we are supposed to be Spider-Man, so like, you get mad at us for worrying about you when fucking, uh, excuse me, I have spider senses and can fucking dodge a bullet, can you? Uh, if the times I've failed, the self missions have taught me anything, no, no you cannot. So, I don't know, yeah, but the stealth sections are complete pace breakers for me, as far as I'm concerned. I kind of almost wish they weren't in the game. They're good for getting, like, useful information and kind of, like, subtle talking between characters, but otherwise it's just very, can I get this over with, can I get this over with, can I go back to playing Spider-Man now? <laughs> but yeah. Um, trying to think of if there's anything else. I guess, no, that's pretty much all to talk about. Uh, yeah. The, the... F the finale for the game is just great. It's just so amazing. If the fact that I barely talked at all during it was any indication, oh my god, it's... Oh, it's heart-wrenching, but it's so good. I love this game. I want there to be a sequel, like, right now. Someone, someone get on the horn with Sony, tell them to make, uh... <laughs> bring me, bring me video games about Spider-Man! Anyways, yeah. That's gonna be it for now, guys. So until next time, I will catch you all later. Asta.